Hey, what's up guys? It's October 31st. It's finally Halloween. And last night, my Washington Nationals won the 2019 World Series for the first time in franchise history. I'm super excited. I'm super jazzed. This is also the last day of Inktober. I'm currently working on editing my sketchbook tour for the remaining weeks. Uh, I've already released my first week. Um, so I'm just working on some editing right now. I'm really excited to get back to just regular drawing, regular artwork. The challenge is really tough. It's something that is a little bit out of my comfort zone. Um, so I'm really excited just to get back to normal artwork as we sort of descend towards the rest of the holiday season. So I'm feeling a little cooped up by drawing every day and sticking to a challenge format. So the weather outside is beautiful. It's warm here in the Washington DC area. So I got my master's degree from Georgetown University and uh, I try to head up there at least once a year uh, to see the fall colors, to see the Halloween decorations through the streets. And as some of you may know, uh, Georgetown University is also one of the filming locations for probably the most well-known horror franchise in movie history, and that is The Exorcist. So I thought it'd be a great opportunity while the leaves have changed. A lot of the areas where the movie was filmed still look exactly like they did uh, more than 40 years ago. There's a couple locations where maybe homes have been repainted, but this is such an older neighborhood in Washington, D.C., that they've really kept sort of their architectural standards. One of the other reasons I want to go downtown is I'm actually short of gear. Uh, I've been wearing the same Georgetown University clothes for a long time. At one point, you could actually find a lot of university gear at all the local stores, but probably because the basketball team hasn't been great in a number of years, it's getting a little bit harder to come by for gear. Plus, I like to go downtown. I like to go to the campus and just walk around, see what's going on, what's changed. There's a lot of new construction going on on campus, um, but you can still see the original locations where The Exorcist was filmed. Let's just get out of the house. Uh, let's get outside. Let's get away from the sketchbook, put down the art pads and paper, and just get outside. Basically what I plan to do is just sort of walk around the different shooting areas. Uh, not all of the movie was filmed in Georgetown. It's my understanding that they were actually filming in and around the university for about two weeks. From what I've read on the internet, a lot of the scenes actually were um, filmed inside on a stage, on a sound stage. There are a few filming locations also which are in Brooklyn. Um, New York, but not enough to really uh, matter. I think Georgetown is actually more iconic location. It's really hard to walk around and film and not look like a complete weirdo. Fortunately, this time of year, there's a lot of people walking around, a lot of tourists taking the exact same photos, the exact same uh, video recordings, and so it just becomes an obstacle actually dodging traffic and watching where you're going and making sure you don't run into anybody and fall down the stairs, because that would be bad. So let's just go. starting off on the mule path down on the CNO Canal. Now this is the furthest spot uh, on this tour and the reason I picked this first is because it was an incredibly busy day downtown and I was really concerned that I was going to either get ticketed or towed. Um, but this is a spot in the movie where Chris McNeil is pleading with Father Caster's character uh, to try to perform the exorcist on her daughter Reagan. Now, I will insert a couple shots from the movie, um, and so you can see some of the buildings line up. Now, there are a number of bridges along the CNO Canal on this stretch, but the main identifying uh, area for the movie is this cobblestone street, and it's clearly visible in the movie itself. 
Okay, now let's head up to main campus. Now, this is the other set of famous steps from the movie. And these head up to Lowinger Library, which you can see here. And this actually extends up onto the main campus. So, there are two scenes uh, here. Ellen Burstyn's character walks down here. Uh, this is just the way she comes home from her shoot at night. And then also there's a really creepy scene where the priest walks down these stairs and it's all shrouded in fog. Now behind me, further down Prospect Street, is the actual exorcist house. So this is kind of going in reverse order, but here we are heading up to campus. And as I'm walking by here, I hear a group of students literally complaining about how long they've been in the library for, so it brought back some memories. Kehoe Field is an all-weather playing service on the roof of Yates Fieldhouse. Uh, it's home to the field hockey team, uh, it's intramural fields, rec, rec facilities, and it's a practice field for all the varsity sports teams. Now in the movie, this is an area where the Lieutenant Kinderman comes to talk to Father Kasser. Father Kasser is just finishing up a run. field at that point. Most of the buildings around did not exist. It's closed off today and as we make our way down uh, an access facility here you can see the new uh, football stadium. There's actually a girls lacrosse game taking place. Only one of the dorms in the background is visible in the movie. I've done a bit of research. I can't tell if the tennis court visible that they walk by is still here or if that's been uh, bulldozed for some of these other facilities. So this uh, vlog is definitely not in sequential order for the movie. Uh, but this is entering main campus. There's a shot of Healy Hall and Gaston Hall is actually in front. It's where I graduated. This is the oldest building on campus. It's over 200 years old. It's on the National Historic Register. And the statue is John Carroll, who is the founder of the university. Now, this scene is pretty well known. This is where we're first introduced to Chris McNeil. She is acting uh, here on the stairs. And we also get introduced to Burke Dennings. Who is the director of the film that she's working on. And there's some sort of a student riot or something going on in the movie. We actually never really find out what the movie that she's filming is about. It's just sort of a back setting to the main Exorcist story. And this is probably the only time that we actually see her filming. There's a couple times that Father Castro actually walks across these red brick walkways, um, heading to and from Dahlgren Chapel and also his room. And there was multiple events going on campus this day, and I thought these pumpkins were actually pretty cool. Here's another view of some of the walkways that were used in the movie.
This here is Dahlgren Chapel, dedicated in 1893. It's younger than the university, but it's also surrounded by three of the oldest buildings on campus. Now, this was a big part of the movie. This is where Father Castor worked. We're actually looking at the entrance that he enters to get up to his uh, office slash room. This gazebo also featured prominently in the movie. As well as this walkway here. I'm all but certain that only exterior footage was used of Dahlgren Chapel as it is a functioning chapel and there were a lot of anti-Christian uh, gore and effects that were used in the movie. I had to get a little creative filming this scene because there was a huge wedding going on. Moving away from the university and back into the streets of Georgetown, here we are at 36th and O. This is one of the directions that Chris McNeil takes, turns a corner, and walks towards her home uh, on Prospect Street. The Tombs Pub is one of Father Karras's watering holes, and it's directly across the street from the Exorcist House. Even though a good majority of the movie was filmed from the perspective of this house, uh, only the exterior footage was used. All of the interior shots were done on a Hollywood soundstage. And the famous exterior may look a little different than it does in the movie. And that's because they created a false side, which included Reagan's room, much closer to the stairs themselves. So as you remember in the movie, Burke was thrown out her window. And then at the end, Father Karras tumbled to his death at the bottom of these stairs. Now, they are steep. I walked up and down there numerous times to get a good shot for this video.